This episode brought to you by Stamps.com. Why go to the store to get stamps when you can have them printed right at home for your convenience? Also brought to you by DoorDash, the app that brings you food you're craving right now, right to your door. George, what you doing out here in the snow? Ernie! Yo, yeah, yo, yeah, yo, yeah. you remember me? Of course I remember you, George. Why wouldn't I? Oh, Merry Christmas to you, Ernie! Merry Christmas to you, George! Merry Christmas to everyone! <laughs> did, did, did you fart, Ernie? I did, George. Why? Felt right in the moment. Okay, I'm gonna keep my distance from you, Ernie. Merry Christmas and all that, but I'm gonna keep my distance from you. Did you need a ride back, George? No, no, I know you. Windows are broken. Merry Christmas, George! Yeah. Merry! George! Oh! It's so good to have you home. Did you punch me in the balls, Mary? I sure did. Why? Do I need a reason? The balls do, Mary, yeah. Oh, look! Oh, good news, George! The town heard you in trouble and they all pitched in! Oh, that's fantastic! Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! Let's sing a New Year's song! Good idea! Should all acquaintance be forgotten? Dog is humping a duck. Indeed it is. Teacher says every time a dog humps a duck. No teacher should start a sentence that way, honey. This is all wrong. <laughs> okay, pause. Oh no, critic. What's wrong? I'm sorry, Morty. I'm just not feeling the magic. But the remote control app put you in any move you wanted, did it not? Yeah, I wanted to recapture the magic of It's a Wonderful Life, but. It seems like there's a lot of literal shit going on, too. You dummy! You have it on the Happy Madison setting. I do? Yeah, it tries to be charming and emotional, but it's, you know, dumb. Oh. Well, can I exit out of all this? No. Oh. Well, that sucks. Well, I made a little figure of yourself to make it better. Yeah, I guess that does make being trapped here for all eternity a little better. I love you. What? Bye. No, well, maybe I can change the environment to look like an NC episode. That'll do. If you watch this channel, you know we're no stranger to picking on Adam Sandler movies. But as I've said in the past, I do think he can do some great comedic stuff and even some great dramatic stuff. 2006 Click is an example of him doing pretty good at the dramatic stuff, but the dumb as hell comedic moments end up sabotaging the majority of it. It's a good idea about a guy given a universal remote to literally control the universe. And honestly, I think Sandler could star in this fine. It's the producing part where everything goes to dog dick. No, literally, the biggest running joke in this involves a dog dick. My heart's ready to melt. Well, since we can't use a remote to fast forward the bad stuff and enjoy the good stuff. Well, okay, you can, but you always say it is and want to see me suffer. Let's take a look at this in more detail. This is... Say, can you unpause us here, buddy? Oh, shoot, yeah, I almost forgot. Good, because I've got, like, five more farts to let out. Maybe I'll hold off for a bit. That's cool. I already let out three. Kill me. Let's take a look at... Click. We open with an architect named Michael, played by Sandler, who, man, must have used that remote already to put himself in a porno. Oh, wait, that's the totally believable wife he has, Donna, played by Kate Beckinsale. I love later they try to point out how clearly out of his league she is. Amazing. She fell for a schlub like you? Wow. You're out of his league, aren't you? As if to say this team up is <clears throat> really rare in these movies. Ask your father. Ask me what? Do you think you'll have time to finish building the treehouse ever? That didn't need a take two. Hey, look at Sundance, that's all his duck. <laughs> if that didn't get a laugh out of you, don't worry, they have like eight more attempts at it. I'll see you tonight at the swim meet. Swim meet? Yes. I'm kidding you, I'll be there. Good thing I've never seen a movie in my life. So the outcome of this is gonna be really surprising. Oh, here's a fun cameo. Cameron Monaghan is the bratty next door neighbor in this. If only DCEU had James Gunn knew this earlier, he totally would have factored in a Joker prequel. My father's stereo is a boat. Your father's stereo blows? I said 
every joke feels like a normal director set up, and then for whatever reason, Tommy Wiseau came in to direct the punchline. He's late for a meeting with his boss, played by David Hasselhoff. And oh boy, ethnic people! Let's play which one is Rob Schneider. There he is! Just make bar longer for Prince Habibu. Now try to figure out which one is Drew Barrymore. And put big drain in floor for a t-shirt contest. I love how half of Schneider's performances are those disclaimers before racist cartoons saying, here's why this wasn't that big a thing back then. I meant no disrespect, Prince Habibu. 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 How dare you mock the nationality of a white SNL star in brown face. Do you watch the movies you write? As you'd imagine, this causes Michael to be late for his son's swim meet, resulting in him cheering for the wrong kid. You're not my dad. As far as you know. Is it really my dad? Typical reaction to discovering any Adam Sandler character is your father. Want to see what makes me cry? Nobody goes drowning in my pool. I can't do this, Sam. Sean Astin plays Bill the Swim Coach, a more supportive father character who played this role much better when he was Carrie Elway's in Liar Liar. Dad, how much longer are you gonna live? I told you, stop reading reviews of my movies! Henry Winkler plays Michael's father, who loves thinking nobody knows how his magic coin trick works despite Michael catching on to it years ago. How do you do that? A good magician never reveals his secrets. Like how these films cost millions, yet they look like a nostalgia critic review. Reach for the sky, Pocahontas! No, Pocahontas is off duty. No, really, in a Sandler movie, that could be Pocahontas! I watched this documentary on Asian architecture. I'm gonna have Rob Schneider play all the Asians. As you'd guess, Michael is too busy to spend time with his kids and even ends up accidentally breaking their toys. I need to see that a few more times. That playing on a loop in my head will help me get through this easier. He goes to, get this, a product placement in a Sandler flick, Bed Bath & Beyond. He goes to the Beyond section of the store, which, yes, is a joke from Family Guy, but they stole a ton, so it bounces out. And he meets an inventor named Morty, played by everyone's favorite something trying to be human, Christopher Walken. Lucky for you, it's not in the barcode system yet, so I'm gonna have to just give it to you. Like everyone else in this, he says everything off, but he's the only actor who weirdly gets better the worse he is. Also, you swear nothing he says is actually from the script. Something stinks like stale french fries. He just said that and refused to say the real line. The O'Doyle's remote can bite my advanced technological ass. I don't know the O'Doyle's, but they can bite it hard. He's the kind of guy you're pretty sure would kill your neighbor if you just winked at him, right? He gives him a universal control that, as you'd expect, alters reality. Oh, it's a catch here, man. Uh, you want me to take my shirt off? Hey. I should just do a count of walking moments hey. trying to band-aid this movie. He gets home and figures out quickly the remote is for his life and not his TV. Would you really think you're gonna have any more time for us, or are things just gonna get even more out of control? Wait, well. Leaves about as much impact as when she's not on pause. Still has more chemistry than most Sandler rom-coms. Holy motherfucker! Ooh, I must be watching the YouTube edit! The next morning, Donna's friend Janie comes over, played by Jennifer Coolidge before White Lotus, so, you know, nobody put any effort into her character. Donna and I are going to the gym, and all the guys are gonna be hitting on us. I don't know how to react to that. Go to the next scene. Just hit menu. On the remote? No, the menu with the red lobster. Yes, on the remote. Hey. Even the product placement lines he pulls off. Oh. <laughs> That's how I believe Walken would react to the entire world disappearing around him. Complete indifference. Michael was eagerly awaiting the arrival of his lunch order. Who's that, James Earl Jones? No, it's his AI. I was replaced with one a while ago. He finds he's even able to rewind to old memories. Like when Winkler had so much de-aging makeup on, he became Carrot Top Barbie. Ah, this is where the quarter trick started. It's a trick coin you buy in a magic shop. Thus the idea for cryptocurrency was created. He takes the remote to his workplace where we see a typical Quentin Tarantino casting call. I think Stacy, it's the most beautiful feat award. And he's told he'll make partner if he comes through on all his duties. If you need female companionship this weekend, my wife's friend Janine, she will eat you up, sir. Everyone in this movie looks like they're gonna have a Netflix crime documentary about him. 
I will admit this bit of Michael getting revenge on his neighbor mocking his son is pretty great. Ah! Mommy! Come on, he can take it. He's gotten through worse. Oh. After another amazing dog humping joke. Will you stop already? Why do you think the audience would not be as annoyed as you right now? He discovers a mode to skip past all the hardships called autopilot. That's you, on autopilot. Mm -hmm. The lights are on, but nobody's home. Oh, it's how he produces his movies. Case in point, when he's told Donna's way out of his league, he looks at some of the women he used to date and, oh no, they're not hot. That's a joke, they're just not hot. When you start saying Deuce Bigelow handled it better, you might not be on the A-est of games. He starts using autopilot to skip all the inconveniences in his life. Oh, showered and dressed and look as I say. Did you smoke crack, Daddy? Do you know the show he used to be a part of? Every once in a while there is a good bit, like Terry Crews randomly playing this guy singing a song in the most Terry Crews way. <laughs> Dude's acting like he's gonna BJ from a Pokemon. He always gives a million percent, doesn't he? <laughs> but then we get several lame zingers in a row. Oh, look at you now, you're all yellow from the scurvy, Arr, Captain. Admittedly, there are worse jokes you could have done with that, but Rob Schneider wasn't around the plane. I love you, you love me, that jogger had giant boobies. If you've seen what Barney is up to nowadays, that's not such a far-fetched lyric. Don't get the Hulk angry. Hmm, this annoying scene or two and a half hours of that? I'll take the annoying scene. All right, all right, everybody. It's sexual harassment speech day. This ought to be rich. Anyone can be a victim of sexual harassment. Even the office slut, Stacy. <laughs> Why don't I ever see Adam Sandler and Michael Bay in the same room? I was engaged in sexual harassment. Hilarious sexual harassment, if you ask me. <laughs> Whenever the Weinstein Company was told women are people, this played on a constant loop in their heads. He goes to a meeting to show off some new designs to new clients. Michael hears what they're saying about his architecture after some more forced product placement. You can get out of here and do jello shots at America's greatest cultural achievement. TGI Fridays! TGI Fridays! Okay, you don't cheer TGI Fridays, you accept that it's the only place open. And he changes his plans to their liking. We can get the hell out of this dump, go to a TGI Friday. And that's what I'm talking about! <laughs> Have you seen their potato skins? It's the literal definition of, I paid for it, I should eat it. Oh, this ad's gonna be subtle. 2023 has really snuck up on us. See, did this whole lame effect just for that joke? I don't care, it stamps! Don't wait any longer to level up your small business and set your year up for success. Get ahead of the competition by using stamps.com to mail and ship. Yep, there they go, stamps! Some way of water effects there. Stamps.com lets you print your own postage and shipping labels right from your home or office. It's ready to go in minutes so you can get back to running your business sooner. It's the post office elevator, concern it. Postage rates just increased again, oh no! Luckily, Stamps.com has the best discounts in the industry, with rates you literally can't find anywhere else, like up to 84% off USPS and UPS. Plus, Stamps.com automatically tells you your cheapest and fastest shipping options. For 25 years, Stamps.com has been indispensable for over 1 million businesses. Use Stamps.com to print postage wherever you do business. All you need is a computer and printer. They even send you a free scale, so you'll have everything you need to get started. Well, look out, man! That was close. Wow! If you need a package pickup, you can easily schedule it through your Stamps.com dashboard. And if you sell products online, Stamps.com seamlessly connects with every major marketplace and shopping cart. No lines, no traffic, no waiting. Ah! Set your business up for success when you get started with Stamps.com today. Sign up at Stamps.com slash nostalgia for a special offer that includes a four-week free trial, plus free postage, and a free digital scale. No long-term commitments or contracts. Just go to Stamps.com slash nostalgia. Say all this insanity makes me hungry. Ooh, that looks good, whatever it is. I can't see it yet, I'm just doing the voiceover, but d -d -d DoorDash, that's my new catchphrase. Nah. Looking to reduce the fees on your restaurant deliveries? Dash Pass by DoorDash is the easiest way to unlock savings on your latest cravings on every eligible order. But just, whoa, guy, jeez. 
Dash Pass is a membership from DoorDash that offers unlimited $0 delivery fees from thousands of eligible restaurants, grocery stores, and convenience stores. Once you join, you'll save on each eligible order and receive DoorDash credits back on all pickup orders. That means more money back in your wallet. A potato! It's not just savings on restaurant deliveries, flowers, pet supplies, groceries. Dash Pass has so much more to save on than just your favorite meals. Get what you want when you need it without any upfront commitments. You'll have the ability to cancel your membership at any time with no hidden or additional fees. You'll also enjoy the best of your neighborhood as you discover the new and best places near you. There's a thing, ah! Get 50% off up to $20 value on your next Dash Pass order when you sign up for a membership and redeem Critic at checkout. That's 50% off your first Dash Pass order up to $20 value with Critic. Say goodbye to delivery fees. Get Dash Pass with DoorDash today using Critic. When you've got zero delivery fees, you're free to get more. Because you can! Start your free month trial today. Oh no, look out the end! Check out Doug playing Miles Morales every Friday on Twitch. We also have content here five days a week. Hope to see you there. Michael thinks the promotion is as good as his, so he spends a ton of money on gifts. When he goes back to work, though, he finds his boss is backing out. Good thing Sandler always has a fart ready to go. I swear this is another scene that's done just so people can caption it. Here's what I came up with, but you're welcome to add your own. Here's some natural dialogue for you. Have you considered the consequences of the thing you're thinking about doing? Have you thought about the actions of doing the thing with the actions you're about to do? Michael says he wants to fast forward several months until he gets his promotion, but Morty reminds him of Lucky from Lucky Charms. What? You're surprised? He's always chasing the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow, but when he gets there, it's just cornflakes. I have literally never seen a Lucky Charms commercial with that premise. I know that's a nitpick, but look at this guy. He clearly knows his cereal lore. When it gets there, it's just cornflakes. No, they're not. They're Cheerios with microwave circus peanuts. Everybody knows that. Michael takes the chance and misses a whole year as that's how long it took to get promoted. I kind of love how bad it looks when he discovers his assistant transition into Daniel Radcliffe. Guess a lot of people went that route. And that's what seems to piss him off the most. No. No. No! There's so many other poorly aged jokes I could have made about this! In fact, the remote keeps jumping forward in time to skip anything he originally set to autopilot, which was quite a lot. Thank God the dog humping joke wasn't set on that, though. Is that duck one of your kids? Why does he have so much screen time? Yes. That's a normal reaction to seeing walking anywhere. I fast forwarded through sex one time. You fast forwarded through an entire year. That's a lot of sex. It's like 30 minutes worth for you. Hey. He tries to get rid of the remote, but it keeps appearing in various places. I wouldn't do that if I were you. There's only one place left for it to pop up. I think it's the same spot Blended came from. The remote takes him to when he's promoted again as CEO of the company. Okay, 2006, your effects weren't this bad. Oh my god, I'm a fat guy! I got titties! I got, I got juicy titties! It looks like an AI image generator put together a Mario porno starring Jon Favreau. Also, no disrespect to Sandler, but since you're making so many fat jokes, you're not the skinniest guy! This would be like Steven Seagal making fun of Brennan Fraser in The Whale. You know... You just know, right? This is 1010 Wins News, February 5th, 2017. Well, see how well these jokes aged. Britney Spears had her 23rd baby today. Dad. Kevin Federline says he's now considering getting a job. Who? Michael Jackson. Really bad, you didn't even have to finish. Also, does somebody slap Sandler in his fat suit before shooting? Oh wait, it's 2017, anyone who saw Jack and Jill did. Here's another weird cameo. Jonah Hill is his son. Maybe if you would take me like to Pilates like you said you would, people wouldn't think I was Rosie O'Donnell. <laughs> yeah, okay, that was pretty good. Samantha? When did you get boobs? As a comedian who specializes in making fourth graders laugh, I pay attention to opportunities to say the word boobs. And this one's got the duck doing all the work. Okay, it's the one time you made that joke work. Michael discovers him and Donna are divorced and she's now going out with Bill. You hate me? Morning! Why did you do this to me? 
Christ, he sounds like Al Pacino choking on ho-hos. Didn't I say he did the dramatic parts well? Ah, only an hour 14 in and we finally start the good movie. The remote skips him forward to, get this, 2023. And to the film's credit, they kinda did a good job predicting how it was gonna look. It's not exact, like hospitals don't quite look this fancy, but eh, he's rich. Maybe that's how the ones for millionaires look. No, it skipped all my sickness. We find he had cancer they had to operate on, which results in a lot of leftover fat. Yeah, okay, I know I said the fat jokes are getting old, but some of them do make me chuckle. And the film suddenly, almost out of nowhere, becomes crazy dramatic. His son is now portrayed by Jake Hoffman, who plays it really straight and really convincing. When he reveals that Michael's father died, Sandler also really lays on the drama, and they both share a really emotional moment. Push my next meeting. No, no, do your meeting. It's fine. Why I'm are you dizzy, are you from, dizzy from, from the operation? Right. You're gonna make me cry, Dad. Okay. <laughs> he visits its grave to see he died in 2021. Then he goes to the last time he saw him, yelling at him, saying he always knew how the coin trick worked. Bob. Bob. This scene is legitimately depressing. It's done incredibly well, really takes advantage of what they can do with the remote in terms of drama. And by God, these actors are giving their all to make you cry, and it legit works. I love you, son. I love you, son. Yeah, a little over an hour of fart jokes, dog humping, white people pretending they're not white people, and suddenly this emotional powerhouse right out of nowhere. It's like watching Waterboy and then suddenly being told, surprise, you're watching the opening of Up. Where was this movie the whole time? I'm sorry about your father. I will say it's maybe the one time Watkins presence doesn't help as bizarrely he lets this drop. An angel, Michael. I thought an angel was supposed to protect people. I'm the angel of death. <laughs> what? Bastard. Uh, I, okay, I guess if we're going for this dark turn, we can do that. But here's the thing, it never comes back. He goes right back to being his friend again at the end and never brings up that he's deaf. We have no idea if he's serious or lying to him. It'd be like if in A Wonderful Life, Clarence suddenly said, you know I'm the devil. What? Merry Christmas. Oh, uh, Merry Christmas. Hail Satan. Skip forward again to his son getting married by the twin Freedom Towers? Get on it. Where we see the lead singer of the Cranberries is singing. I get more and more depressed the more I compare this to reality. And Michael and Donna share a dance despite not being together anymore. Again, this all plays really well. Michael, are you okay? But he falls ill and wakes up in the hospital finding out that his son is gonna skip his honeymoon. Kensington deal might be falling through so I gotta go do damage control. Michael tries to tell him to go on the trip as family is more important. Isn't that Colin Farrell? Where? <sighs> ah, that classic acknowledging Colin Farrell exists gag. Let me try it. Ha! He exists! Works every time. He runs out into the rain, literally in his final breaths, and tells him that family is the most important and dies in the street. It's a little melodramatic, but I think it still works. Also, I do giggle when he does this to Bill. But even then, they have to smooth it over. It knows it has to be a heartfelt scene, and that's what comes across. As you may have deduced, though, he wakes up back in the store and is given a second chance. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's my crappy car. Merry Christmas, you beautiful McDonald's, you! I mean, here I am, staying up all night, killing myself for a 4th of July camping trip, but you won't let me think. What did you just say? I said I'm doubling your salary. Another Christmas cliches in this ironically not Christmas movie. Oh, and Sundance! Oh, that's the dog's name? I guess it's the closest to Sundance I'll ever get. Go get it, baby. I bet you didn't see this coming. I know just where to find oh, the like When you put together, this was all Sandler's reboot of Baby Huey. And that was Click. And you know, I'm reminded of a saying. You can fake being serious, but you can't fake being funny. For whatever reason, the serious parts of this movie are done really effectively, and the comedy, which let's face it, should have written itself, really falls flat. So it's rough. I do want to recommend this film just for people to see the last third, but you have to wait through so many annoying jokes to get there. Maybe you won't mind them as much, and you'll be able to ride them through and get to the real poignant stuff, but for me, it was just too obnoxious to say it worked as a whole. But what do you think? 
Is it worth waiting to the end? Do you think it works fine even before the last third? Or maybe you're someone that thinks the last third ruins it. Let me know your thoughts and I'll see you the next time you tune in. I'm the Nostalgia Critic, I remit. Still got some of those farts saved up, Ernie? You know it! Wait, can you do it dressed as Elsa? What? I think he said, can you do it dressed as Elsa? I guess, but what difference would that make? Elsa Gate! Oh, fuck. Hey. We're still doing cameos for charity, and this month we're doing Code Angels. This one was actually starred by a friend of mine several years ago. Code Angels buys new warm winter clothing for Chicago's children in need. It's helped over 4,000 kids, but that's only a fraction of how many more still need help. Even though it's February, winter still gets crazy cold around here. We actually just had snow a few days ago. And so many children deserve to feel warm, and you can help them out with that. So if you want a video of me saying happy birthday or good luck or whatever, click on the link below and be giving to a good cause. And even if you're like, no, I hate your face, well, consider giving to this charity anyway. It's a wonderful organization doing wonderful things. Check them out when you get a chance and see all the incredible things they accomplish.